Good morning and welcome to Gunner Shot. Uh, today we're going to analyze the PLM missile firing. And uh, we'll see what happened because a few days back they fired a intercontinental ballistic missile and did something. What did they do? Uh, this is my initial analysis. As we go along, as the story unfolds or the whole thing takes shape, I'll come back to you later. But let's do this first. Uh, before I start this uh, analysis of the PLA, I must tell all of you that today is Gunner's Day. Today is the 198th anniversary of the Regiment of Artillery. And uh, it's a proud day for me. And, uh, you know, a lot of uh, good wishes and all that. But my good wishes are to the nation. If our artillery prospers, the, the nation prospers. So what can artillery do? A lot of people have been asking me. So this, that, modernization, X, Y, Z, and all that. Let me give you a glimpse of what artillery can do. And this is just one battery of the Grad BM-21. Have a look at it, and then we'll speak further. Well, happy Gunners Day. This is what Gunners can do. And, uh, you know, those of you who don't believe what I say, and I'm proud that I made all this happen for a considerable part of my life. Okay, now let's get on to what this whole PLA firing was all about and all that. <clears throat> this is what the, the PLA put out. You know, this is the official statement which they put out the day before yesterday. They said the PLA rocket force launched an ICBM, Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, carrying a dummy warhead to the high seas in the Pacific Ocean at 8.44 on September 25th. Right? That is China type. And the missile fell into expected sea areas. This test launch is a routine arrangement in our annual training plan. It is in line with the international law and international practice and is not directed against any country or target. But it's not so routine. Right? What they said. And it, they said it's not aimed at any target or a country, but we'll infer that. But what's important is this is the first launch which they've done in more than 40 years. Okay, and then the Chinese media went to and said, look, we have given uh, all the countries which are in the path and all adequate notice as per international norms. Uh, Japan said it didn't receive any uh, intimation and expressed their concerns. And so did Australia and New Zealand because they all in the same path, in the same area. Uh, so. Uh, what is this test all about? That's what we want to know. It's routine, but is it directed against one country or a target? No. It's given multiple signals. That's what I want to put across. First, as far as the missile itself is concerned, uh, we don't know really whether it's a DF-41 or a DF-31. A DF-31, there's a new system called the DF-31AG. Uh, it's with the upgraded propulsion system, and they would have upgraded the electronics also on it. What, what we know is it's not a test firing. It's an operational firing of the CPLA. That's the important thing. 
there is not some test being carried out or launch being carried out by scientists and all that no operational firing and it was fired from a proper launcher it's called the tail t e l tail what is it it's a transporter erector launcher so it's a operational firing a mobile launcher basically that's what i said and it's a cold launch what is a cold launch you know normally when you fire a missile the first stage of the uh, propellant you know is ignited and then it takes off uh, in the cold launch what do you do is you don't do that you push the missile out uh, by pressure you pressurize the chamber and the missile is put in that in the launcher you generate the pressure and launch it and as the missile takes off you ignite the propellant it it becomes a little more efficient that's about all it doesn't give you additional range and all it gives you additional uh, stability as the missile goes up and it gives you stability basically in space because you get a slightly longer burn time okay that's a cold launch uh the way they've launched everything and being a uh road launch system or a yeah mobile launcher it's one of their latest systems i'm sure they have developed uh, you know tested one of their latest systems and from what can one can make out from df31 and df41 is that what they've used at least is that it is a uh, they've used a single reentry vehicle it's not a multiple a reentry warhead they have multiple reentry warheads and that's part of the story uh, of china but this is a single reentry warhead what is a single reentry warhead it's a three stage rocket one stage would have taken the missile up to a particular level the second would have taken it to a further level and the third would have put it into space and then only one vehicle has come back or one warhead has come been made to re-enter back okay that's the important point right now this is the map which they've shown i'll get out i'll show you the uh, pictures because that's more important for you this is what has been put out september 25th 044 gmt right missile likely fired from hainan island believed to be the first time since 1980 that china launched icbm into the international waters and it fell near in the pacific near the french polynesia this is what's come out you look at it from this point of view from a three dimensional point of view it's fired from hainan it's fired not over taiwan not over luzon luzon is the northernmost part uh, island of philippines and taiwan it they fired it between the two right this is a ballistic missile i'll explain what a ballistic missile is etc 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 we'll talk of that and on the other hand it went and fell in french near uh, french polynesia about 3 to 400 kilometers is what they say uh, and far away from hawaii now the issue is they've said they've launched but we don't know the accuracy the accuracy is just not known okay and uh, because we don't know the accuracy for the simple reason that we don't know um we i mean what we don't know is what is actual coordinated with they fired so whatever they fired is correct and we take it as that okay now what is the interesting part if you see a full length of the whole thing again i'll get out have a look at it full thing they fired from hainan right down to french polynesia where you look where hawaii is and all that and the interesting part the where the controls are and all that in the insects the we let got get involved with it the thing is if you look at it from a circular point of view yes this missile can reach uh usa mainland usa from there there's no doubt 12 to 15000 kilometers it goes across so it has its implications we'll discuss that okay now let me explain to you the kind of missiles which are in anyone's inventory generic right what are, and what and compare it to what has actually been demonstrated and fired what has been fired is the ballistic missile the one in blue that trajectory has been fired okay 
so you have to be very clear about that the second thing which could have been fired or which they have in their inventory is the hypersonic glide vehicle which they have not fired what is a hypersonic glide vehicle it goes uh, to a extent there it lets go a glide vehicle which glides down to the target and that will be a you know is it a hypersonic velocity what is hypersonic the hypersonic part is the launch the glide vehicle starts maneuvering from top of the atmosphere maintains its speed and comes down the way you want it the way you want it and i'll speak about the glide a little later then you could also have a hypersonic cruise missile like brahmos brahmos is of course supersonic only it goes about 4 mac uh, one more mac and you're past supersonic because supersonic is anything be above 5 mac is supersonic so what we have fired today what we have witnessed is this ballistic missile it is not uh, it is not a cruise missile it's not a hypersonic so don't get confused let's not have you know different thinking okay now why you want to fire uh, you know what's the problem of a ballistic missile the ballistic missile gets detected whereas a hypersonic glide vehicle or a hypersonic cruise missile as you can see in this uh, you know picture it will go a hypersonic glide vehicle will go along the red trajectory below detection uh, the cone and the hypersonic cruise missile will hug you can make it hug the terrain so it can't get detected that is where the hypersonic cruise and the glide missiles uh, glide vehicles are advantages uh, and i said this is a ballistic trajectory to the target so it's just a parabolic trajectory if it had been a, 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 a mirv or mar or multiple independently re targeted reentry vehicles they would have come and each missile or uh, from the main warhead would have followed its own path okay now i am showing you something called the fobs what is fobs with the orange trajectory fobs is a acronym for uh, fractional orbit bombardment system what is fractional orbit bombardment system you fire a missile and it need not go in the direction of your target or anything it is launched into space and put into orbit so it's a orbital system it's orbiting the earth whenever you want it you fractionize that orbit and make him dip to the earth like you see there's a yellow line on top which goes with a dotted line but there's a yellow line which dips down that yellow line is the fractional you fractionize the orbit and make him dip onto the target now all this is, china has the capability i'll right i'll come to it a little later but china has not used it so what they've used is the ballistic missile okay right what is the glide principle understand this then the glide principle you launch the missile at about 100 kilometers above the atmosphere right just short of the uh, where the atmosphere finishes you have a separation the glider gets separated from the main missile and thereafter the glider is controlled by the satellite and then it is you know now this glider because it has gone to that height where there's no air density air is rare there's no uh, it's near space it's coming down at great speed it and it catches speed with the additional gravity and it is around 10 mac it could be 8 7 8 10 mac it doesn't matter and then it keeps coming down satellite controls it and to the end it becomes a conventional weapon it's a different thing that you could put a uh, you know you could put a, a nuclear warhead on it or a conventional warhead but we'll come to that a little later okay now i'll give you an idea of the chinese the chinese ballistic missiles so that you have a whole idea cruise and ballistic missiles in fact as per csis china has the most active and dense missile development program in the world or the diverse missile uh, development program in the world uh, it is modernizing its icbms developing multiple independently targetable reentry vehicles and 
hypersonic boost glide vehicles. Now, China's Navy is also developing a new fleet of nuclear ballistic submarines. And with that nuclear submarines, you will get ballistic missiles also. Okay. Right. And it is also advancing its ISR. What is ISR? Intelligence, Surveillance and Reconnaissance Capability. So all this gives China a very potent capability. Now, I'll, these are the this is the inventory of missiles which China has. Either the DF-31 which I have shown or the DF-41 would have been used in this missile, in this thing. If they had used DF-41, you are looking at a range of 12 to 15,000 kilometers. 31 is 7 to 11,700. Then if it had, they've used the uh, DF-31, they have fired it at their extreme range. Okay. And in this, you can also say which, show which are all, uh, you know, operational and what are the cruise missiles and what are the SRBM and yeah, wo, sab is mein hai. at your own testing. That's why I've shown it full. You can have a look at it in detail. Okay. Now, uh, let me plug this whole story with uh, what I did earlier. I did an extensive video on analysis of the PLARF. Okay, where they are deployed, what kind of thing are there, how many bases they have, how many silos they have, what the entire philosophy, their organization, everything I had done about, I think about uh, three, four months back. Now that's the link for uh, the YouTube in Ghana shot and this link I put in the description of this video. Have a look at it because this gives the larger issue of the uh, PLARF and this just today it gives you uh, today's just as a focus. It's an initial analysis as things go we'll, uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take it. Okay. Now, the point is this, it's not as if China has, this is the first test in 44 years, it was a bakwasa. let me be very clear. They have not fired uh, ICBM in the last 40, 50 years, that's okay. They, earlier they used to fire, right? But they've been testing other systems. They have tested the DF-26 in Mongolia and uh, Xinjiang in Tibet. They've carried out nuclear tests at Lopnar in uh, Tibet. Um, in 2021, they fired that FOBS, which I showed you, you know, uh, the one with the LO trajectory. Yeah, this, the LO trajectory one. They fired FOBS in the hypersonic mode. And that was quite deadly. Actually, that technology is something we must grant it to them that China is the only one which has this kind of demonstrated a FOBS with the hypersonic uh, uh, glide vehicle. But when they fired it in 2021, 20, uh, the missile or the, the glide vehicle in the final stages, they couldn't control it. It went 20 kilometers off. So there's no point in firing a, a, a costly missile over such a long distance and it going 20 kilometers off. Uh, as of now, I don't think the hypersonic with FOBs uh, is as it weaponized in the full uh, format we're looking at. Okay, uh, it is still in a, in a development phase. Uh, what warhead is it has got or not, no one knows. But the fact is they have this technology. That's important. Uh, then another thing, everyone says, look, we should have a lot of hypersonic A1 and all that. And the end of the day, a hypersonic missile takes out only one target. It doesn't take out two targets. So unless uh, China is very clear as to what it is doing, so many hypersonics and all are waste of time in my way of thinking. They give good technology, good everything, they'll beat the air defense systems, they'll do everything and take out one target at the end of the day, what's the big deal? If it's a very critical target they and which will turn the war, yeah, probable. But in the history of warfare, no single one missile or two missiles have turned warfare except if you use nuclear warheads. Will China use nuclear warheads? That's a big question. See, new, the moment you talk of nuclear warheads, you're looking at, uh, you're looking at a political weapon. It's no more a tactical or operational weapon in the military man's hand. It's a political weapon. The ramifications are more. 
has china war gamed all its posters out i don't know is it prepared to take that risk because if someone responds and the, there's a regime change which happens in china the communists will go out so are the communists ready to do that so there are a lot of issues we'll not go into nuclear uh, thing okay they have also fired df21 in the south china sea they have also fired missile firing around taiwan when nancy pelosi came so it's not as if they have not carried out tests some of these tests they carried out scientifically some especially against uh, around taiwan and all they have carried out with pla so pla has fired there and at that time if you remember they were duds they fired about 11 12 missiles some of them were duds in this they fired one missile and it been successful all the best to them and what's important is that it is an operational firing and more importantly they announced it beforehand as a, a training exercise of the pla and not as a development test so this is a military launch it's not a test launch by isro type of a uh, situation this is a proper operational launch okay that's what you have to understand now being an operational launch there are some implications what are the implications it's a training exercise a full fledged training exercise would have written because i've done it for our, our own people so i can understand what what has happened there right they would have done how to take the missile out energize it um, check it out uh, run all the electronics in it and all that and then put it on a launcher and take it to a particular point and then fire it and this their entire sequence has been operationalized in this which every uh, army will do every time you do a uh, launch you go through this okay uh, so it's not something new but they've done that training so we have to be cognizant of that the second thing is the logistics of this whole story they would have uh, sorted out okay main thing which a lot of people are saying is if you remember people said their missiles have water this that and all that so the capability of the pla has been tested and the all this uh, missile capabilities with uh, the corruption rumors and all has been tested let's grant it to them you have to be cognizant uh because uh xi jinping had lost confidence in that missile force it apparently from the number of sock sackings of the missile force commanders that was apparent but uh i still have questions on this let me ask let me uh, highlight the uh, my doubts you see when they did this launch they would have ensured that this is a fresh missile but you know proper because you launch something you give a no time out and then you fire out and it doesn't work then they'll be in trouble yeah i mean unka to man maryada gaya okay it would have been egg on the face so they would have checked the missile out 10 times and this missile would have been a brand new missile so if it is a brand new missile there is still question marks on the older missiles see the problem won't happen with the brand new missile off the production line everything new and check out and you fire everything will be okay what happens to the old missiles how do you check that out or have they taken the risk of taking one missile out of their stock and fired i don't think xi jinping had this uh, kind of a political risk taking to do that because if it had gone probably he would have been also gone so that's how it is so and they would have tested out because we don't know exactly why they did this test but i'm talking of one facet then they would have also done this test because recently the minuteman uh, missile which of usa they had to abandon it just before firing few years uh, some time back 
the there was a russian missile failure and in that russian missile failure it burst on the launcher itself so you take that as one uh, the us launch as second and now the chinese launch they're putting a point across oh we are good you chaps don't couldn't do it we had done it and it's a messaging to their own people look we are capable of doing this see the uh, russians have failed the uh, the uh, you know uh, us people have failed but we have not failed so we have a very strong force so a lot of things there are political issues practical issues and there's a messaging given to the others ki bhaiya hamare paas sab kuch hai and all that so all these issues are there in this launch okay and then there's a policy of coercion now which they can put already people are saying so look chinese have launched a missile which can reach usa everyone knew it now they demonstrated it that means they can do it and now they can coerce if they can coerce usa they'll coerce india also tomorrow they'll coerce everyone they also put the nuclear option back on the table they are signaling strength resolve everything okay, that look we can do it we'll, we 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 will do it uh this could this missile this test could have happened because of some external impetus what is that external impetus i don't know maybe they've been needled into doing this there are a whole lot of things you know no one will tell you why they have done it why the chinese have done it no one knows why the chinese came to eastern ladakh you can still guess uh, you you have about 10 12 reasons one of any one of them could have happened even in this case same thing and then uh, the chinese sorry the us guys they have deployed the typhoon uh, system on in luzon where is luzon here look at it uh, yeah one minute yeah so if you see luzon is the northernmost a uh, territory of philippines just so, uh, north of that is taiwan on luzon china uh, usa has deployed the uh, typhoon missile system from luzon a tomahawk cruise missile which has a range of about say 1000 odd kilometers or more it's, they have different varieties it can hit the mainland it can hit anything up to vietnam it can cross uh, you know Taiwan, all the islands in the South China Sea come under its shadow. So, is that this test is uh, indication for them to tell USA, "Hey, boy, you have to deploy it. I can also do something. I have." And of course, you know, in the last two plus two dialogue with uh, the Japanese, the US gave support for uh, nu- nuclear support. Let me explain this. there is a debate within japan whether we should nuclearize so in the 2 plus 2 dialogue the uh, us uh, people went and told uh, japan you don't have to develop nuclear capability we will come to your rescue we will be there we will give you the support so is this some signaling to japan taiwan philippines and uh, usa and also to australia and all those people ki bhai ye hum kar sakte hain and is it also a thing to us but look at it from another point of view we also tested agnify we tested agnify recently with multiple independent uh, uh, you know lo- uh, capability reentry capability if you remember i did a a uh, extensive program on that also with uh, mr sri ayer so that also is there so you know both things are there so i won't take it beyond that but we'll have to see how things happen beyond this thanks a lot this was a short presentation uh, initial analysis we'll come back with more uh, thank you uh, good afternoon and have a great day jai hind